Hi, I'm Mikhail Ali. You can catch me on The S Stories, where I will talk about my journey and my achievements as a 10-year-old. Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to yet again another edition of the S Stories right here on Sophia Anjum's official YouTube channel. Of course, with a tagline called Keep the Spirit Alive. Now today I'm very excited. I had this bundle of energy in the studios of the S Stories today. And you know, yesterday um, while I was making, you know, some points and I was jotting down some points down, I was like, when I was 10 years old, what was I doing? And then I thought about it. I was like, okay, so I was watching cartoons, I was reading books. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to my friends, I was strolling in the park, I was playing games. I mean, sure, that was great, but I wasn't really competing in international championships or I wasn't really talking to other students or other kids my age and giving them a message of hope, positivity, unity, determination. So ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls out there today in the studios of the S Stories, we have a prodigy. Okay, now let me tell you something about him as well. So his name is Mikhail Ali, okay, and he's popularly known as Mika. He is a 10-year-old multi-dimensional individual living in the US, having roots in Pakistan. Now, take a listen very carefully. He is a dreamer, he is an achiever, and currently competing in the under-12 tennis in the US. Presenting Mikhail Ali, aka Mika. How are you? Asalaamu As Alaikum. Asalaamu As Alaikum. I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome to my show. So, I've heard that you didn't have any jet lag? Um, no, not much because actually three days before yeah. we came, I was sleeping at five and waking up at three. Mm, so you were prepping up already. Yes. You know, so I must mention this as well. You know, before we started off our show, um, Offer I asked him a question that how would you like to describe yourself in three words? And he told me that it would be focused, driven, and happy. Would that be correct? Yes. Okay, lovely. So to everyone watching right now, let's talk about your background and your history. Where were you born in and where did you study from? Um, I was born in Kenosha, Wisconsin and there was a place where I did pre-K there called Rexplex. Oh, okay. And it had like only pre-K and maybe kindergarten. Okay. And then it had like sports stuff. All right. Like swimming and basketball. Okay. And I did do basketball there in pre-K. Ah, the mini Michael Jordan, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's lovely. So tell me about your family. Tell me about your parents and tell me about the kind of interests they have. You know, the kind of interests you grew up with, for example, could be playing instruments, reading or sports. Um, I grew up playing um, basketball. I did gymnastics and taekwondo mm -hmm. and I'm actually a first degree black belt. Absolutely you are. My dad, he likes tennis, cricket okay. and basketball. Um, he, when he was younger, he was on a cricket league oh, and he wow. was actually pretty good. Really? So which yeah. city is he from originally? I think he is from Karachi. Okay. And his dad is from Lahore as well. Okay, all right. That's pretty interesting. So you have a lot of variety in your house. Yeah, yes. roots from Multan and Karachi and Lahore and all of that. That's wonderful. So you were mentioning something related to your first degree, uh, take one to black belt at the age of nine. And you've also participated in the championship, right? Yes. Let's talk about that experience. How was it for you? It was actually a really fun experience. Like I was the youngest kid in the US championship, US Open championship. Yeah. And like it was it was like scary until like I started doing it and then I was like, it's my thing. <laughs> so then I do it. I like the confidence, man. Okay. And I got three gold medals and three silver medals. That is amazing. I was just about to ask you this question also. So um you had to prep up for this, right? Yes. It took you a while to train and yeah. you know to finally achieve those medals. So let's talk about that journey of yours. How was that for you? You know, the training. It was part. it was um really tough training. My dad usually didn't come see my taekwondo training, but one time he came to watch, and uh, if um, me and my friend we had one routine together and we had to be in sync with everything. Yeah. Every time we weren't in sync, we had to do push-ups on the knuckles okay. and we both our, our both of our knuckles were like Bruised. red. I know. And then 
uh, we were both crying a little bit Aww. and my dad said to pull me out but then I said no and then I did really well in the US. That's amazing. So okay. as they say, no pain, no gain, right? Yeah. You gotta work for it. You know, yeah. again, ladies and gentlemen, as I was mentioning earlier on as well, when I was like 10 years old or nine years old for that matter, when this was happening, I was watching cartoons and being happy with watching <laughs> Tom and Jerry chasing each other, <laughs> you know, and trying to kill themselves also. <laughs> okay, so now let's come to cartoons now, okay? Hey, cartoons are not that bad. Come yeah, on, everyone loves watching cartoons. What do you love watching on TV? Um, I have seen Tom and Jerry a few times. Okay. Um, on Disney Channel, they have this cartoon called Big City Greens. I okay. like to watch that. What's it about though? It's about these, there's a dad okay. and then there's two children. They lived on a farm, but then their farm got destroyed. Okay. And the mom um, tried to free the cows, which she wasn't supposed to. So then okay. she went to jail. Okay. Hmm. But their grandma was in the city. Okay. And, but they had like a farm in the city and there's two big buildings right next to them and there's like a farmhouse <laughs> in the middle. It's kind of nonsense. Yeah, so it they, does kind of sound like yeah. nonsense also. And they <laughs> moved to the city. Yeah. And the dad is like always super careful about everything. Okay. The daughter, she's like, she's really respectful. Mm -hmm. But the grandma and the son are like crazy <laughs> they do like <laughs> everything and they're like going nuts like every episode so tell me something like related to this episode. and the grandma has a sword <laughs> oh she has a sword okay so what about video games like are you into video games you know kids your age they love all these minecraft and i don't know what not games like my nephews love it so let's talk about those games. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. video games too. Mm -hmm. My favorite game is called Fortnite. Oh, of course. I've yeah. played Fortnite with my nephews. You have? Yes, and it took me a while to understand <laughs> what was happening. And they're like, hey, Popo, Popo, you'll be killed. Do this, do that. <laughs> Go there, blast that person off. I'm like, what on earth is going on? What am I doing? <laughs> you know, all these different places you have yeah. to go. What do you love about Fortnite? Um, I like the aspect that you can actually build in most shooter games. You yes. can't build. Yes. Building is actually really important now mm -hmm. in Fortnite. If you can't build, you'll just get destroyed. <laughs> mm, absolutely. So yeah. we got a lot of tips from the maestro himself. Now <laughs> let's come to some interesting uh, things in your life. Again, you know, at such a young age, um, there's something else that I was reading about that you are also a former competitive gymnast and you yes. have won awards in gymnastic co competitions as well. Yes. So let's talk about that journey of yours. Must have been interesting, huh? Yeah. Gymnast I just remember the monkey bar. <laughs> That's not. A, a I know. Thing that's what I'm gymnastics. saying. <laughs> um, gymnastics is actually one of the hardest sports because you have to like be really flexible and have a lot of upper body strength more than lower body. You still need lower body for a few events, but upper body strength is really important. And it's actually r the most scary sport because you're like swinging around and then like. There's one th thing called the P bars, which is like this. Yes. Which is like this thin, and you have to be like right here, yeah. and then do your thingies. That's scary, isn't and it? And it's pretty scary. Yeah. But once you get used to it, it's. It's so how okay. do you get rid of your fear? That's a very important question because you know that's what sort of keeps you away from a lot of challenges in life. You know the yeah. fear of failure or the fear of falling or getting hurt. Yeah. How did you overcome that? I've. I wasn't afraid of much mm -hmm. because I like to take risks. But over there, they like in gymnastics, they put like a mat. So if you fall, yeah. you're on the mat. So they do it. You make you do it on the mat first, so you're not scared. Right. And then you do it, and it's like all fine. Okay. But if you just do it without the mat at first, it will be so scary. Yeah. It will yeah. be like. Let's just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I absolutely understand what you're talking about. Now let's come to my favorite part of this interview, which is tennis. Okay, so I was yes. following you on the social media platforms. Actually, I was stalking him on the social media platforms that I was checking was out of. Yeah, I was definitely stalking you. <laughs> so I saw you interviewing Samul Haq Qureshi and doing your thing and tennis and all of that. You training and all of that. So let's talk about your journey as a tennis player. Yes. An upcoming tennis player. Yes. Tennis is my favorite sport so far. Mm -hmm. I do love every sport that I've played, but tennis is my favorite. 
Um, I love moving yeah. around and having like swinging and like hitting the ball on the other side and yeah. trying to make your opponent run. <laughs> and your dad loves but tennis as yes, well. Yes, right? he That's does what you play mentioned. tennis, hmm. but he's not that good. I destroy <laughs> him. Whoopsie daisy. I destroy him. I hope him he's not watching time. this part right now. <laughs> yeah, I hope he's not. I really hope he's not. <laughs> okay. But so yeah, I'm... I destroy him every time. Okay. But he he does know stuff about tennis. Mm -hmm. He is more, he has good strategies. Okay. More than technique. All right. His technique is horrible, but he has very good strategies All right. to okay. win. Sure. But in tennis, you also need to do fitness training because mm -hmm. if you just play tennis, it won't help. It w will help you, but you need to do tennis and fitness yeah. to work on your strength and yes. agility. So I've recently started doing fitness twice a week okay and that's been helping me a lot yes i was watching your videos online yes. you've been training and that's wonderful yeah. so how do you envision yourself in the tennis field say in the next 10 to 20 years yeah that's kind of hard to say because yeah. like i'm sure you dream about it or yes think about i do it, yeah? dream about being on stadium yeah. court wimbledon of course US Open. who are you playing against and went on in my dream. Yeah, in your dreams. Um, Novak Djokovic. He's, really? He's my favorite tennis player. He's amazing. What yeah. about uh, Rafa and what about Federer? My dad's a huge Federer fan. Yeah. He went. He was so mad when Federer lost, yes. having two match points. Yes. Yes. And then came, he, actually, in one of the match points, he completely sh shanked a shot. Like he should have made it easily. But on the other match point, he did something really dumb. Oh. He hit a he hit a Whoopsie pretty daisy. He he hit a pretty like it was a decent shot, but like Novak's like one of the fastest players in the world and like the best defender. And he just came to net and then Novak just destroyed the ball well, past. But the thing him. is, you know, Federer has had his day. You know, he has been there, done that. He was a champion. Yes. And he when he was there when Djokovic was not there. Yeah. So yes, I'm a fan of Federer, so I would definitely, you know, I like defend Federer him. Too. I do like his style of play. Yes, yes. And I also like Nadal. I've been to his academy actually. Yeah. He's um, very passionate, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. He's probably one of the most the most intense players. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, time is running short. I would have loved to have a, a conversation with you more, Mikhail, but I really want to talk a little bit quickly about your online show, Lead the Way. Yes. It's very interesting. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Lead the Way, I started Lead the Way um, in 2020 when the coronavirus started. Mm -hmm. I was watching the news and I saw how people were losing jobs, losing money and I wanted to um, interview amazing people that yeah. are doing amazing things um, during those times because that would help them out, it would help other people out. Sure. And you can check out my interviews at on my website which is MikaTensity.com or on my YouTube channel which is also MikaTensity. And yeah, that's how I started Lead the Way. Fantastic, that's lovely. I'm so proud of you for doing such amazing work at Thank such you. an age. Um, okay, so last question before we say goodbye. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the Pakistani personalities that you've yeah. heard about, you've read about, you've seen, you've observed, and you really admire them. Um, I, I do like um, some of the food. I, Paratha and Plow. Well, I was favorite. talking about Pakistani personalities. If Paratha is yeah. a personality, then I'm with you. High five right there. Okay. I, though I was talking about personalities, but, yes. but Paratha works as I well. Think, <laughs> I think there's good culture. Okay. A lot of people are really nice. All right. And um, it's kind of different, definitely different to uh, where I live. Okay. It's a big, a lot of big cities, and where I live, it's like uh, less of sure hectic. Sure. Sure. But I like the personalities of everyone and the culture. Okay, all right. Well, I was talking more about individuals, you know, like for example, Esamul Haq yeah. Qureshi okay. or yeah. for example, say Malala, you know, like okay. those individuals, okay. like personalities. Yeah, do you have any in mind? Yeah, Esamul Haq Qureshi, he's, yeah. he's a very nice guy. Like, I don't know what could happen. Like, I don't know if he was going to say like, you want, 
we I only have 15 minutes or <laughs> stuff like that but he just kept going on and on and yeah. he he I really admire him and the work he puts into his tennis. Oh, absolutely. I think he is brilliant at what he does. Yeah. And uh, I hope, inshallah, that you become uh, perhaps the next to someone, Haq Qureshi, mm -hmm. coming up from Pakistan very soon, based in the US. So thank you so much, Mikael. It was such a pleasure to see you here. And I'm so proud of the work that you're doing so far. Just keep going, be consistent. Um, so lastly, what would be your take home message for everybody out there watching us? Well, I'm a kid and my message to other people is to just try new things. Mostly the kids, try, just, just um, explore. Just try new things and don't be afraid to lose because you actually learn more from your losses than from your wins. Because let's say you win in a super tight match, you'll be like, I won, let's celebrate. But if you lose in a super tight way, then you'll be like, how can I do better? And so, yeah, don't be afraid to lose and keep trying new things and work hard. Bravo, Mikhail for president, everybody. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mikhail, and thank you so much for watching this episode of the S Stories. And I think I would also like to give a shout out to his parents because I feel that it's very important for us to realize that um, every kid is different. Every kid has uh, his or her own unique qualities. And I feel that when we pinpoint or when we sort of um, understand the strengths of our kids i think we really need to nurture them and we need to cushion that forward as well so a good support system is very important so on that note take good care of yourselves and remember that don't just wait for an opportunity create it have a great time catch you guys next week bye bye i won my tournament it was a very hard tournament to, to win, but I won the tournament and I want to dedicate this trophy to you. No man, that's super, super sweet of you. First of all, congratulations on winning the title and uh, very kind of you and very sweet of you to dedicate it to me. Mario, at what age did you start to do gymnastics? Well, almost like you, Mikhail. I started at five years old, so we're pretty similar mm -hmm. in that regard, yeah.